I glanced between the bloody equations on the wall and the pile of corpses behind me. I closed my eyes tightly as my stomach once more growled at me, urging me once more to sate my hunger. It wouldn't take much. My predecessors had created the knives necessary to take the flesh I needed to survive, if only for a few more days. I shook my head. I was running out of predecessors to eat, and the idea of cutting into the bodies of my beloved friends, or worse, spikes. I swallowed my saliva, hoping that would help. It didn't. I only tasted the metallic bits of flesh that were stuck between my teeth. I'd almost kill for a simple piece of bread. Maybe even some water. I shook my head and picked up the knife in my mouth. It had taken a full day, but I understood that magic was no longer possible. At least I had no reason to fear an infection. I brought my head down, about to cut a chunk of flesh from a twilight, when I stopped, turning around my eyes wide and the knife falling from my mouth. A familiar tingle, the one I prayed to never feel again. No. No, Twilight, why? Why? My ears pinned back, all the work to save her, and the foolish mare teleported. I didn't know if I could watch again. She knows what happens. What is she thinking? I forced my eyes open. A sandwich. A sandwich wrapped in paper. An apple. A beautiful, red, ripe apple and a bottle of water. My mouth filled with saliva as I stared at the small meal, barely noticing as the copy was sent to its destination. Slowly, I walked closer, trembling. Have I gone mad? Is this how my sanity finally leaves me? In the form of a simple meal? I licked my lips and sat down. I don't care. Sanity or no. I can't turn from this. I wrapped the sandwich. My favorite daisy with mayo and tomato. Then I stopped. The paper wrapping around the sandwich wasn't blank. Twilight. I've been to see Princess Celestia and Luna. They were horrified what I told them. Luna looked a bit ill, but we all swore never to teleport again. Twilight. I closed my eyes to clear the tears that were filling my eyes as they streamed down my cheeks. I returned to the paper. There was a bunch of equations I needed to add to my own. Of course, Twilight had memorized what was on the wall. I pray this food has reached you, my former student. Though, we have no way of knowing for certain. Even so, we will continue sending it. Twilight Sparkle, stay strong. We will save you, Celestia. The paper dropped to the floor as I bowed my head, tears streaming from my eyes. Yes, I promise, princess. I'll stay strong. After a few moments of sobbing, I swallowed hard and lifted the sandwich, taking a bite. Flavor exploded into my mouth. It was amazing. After so long of eating pony flesh and drinking only blood, I'd forgotten what food tasted like. Real food. I finished the sandwich in record time, and my tongue licked up the remaining crumbs that were stuck to my muzzle. I opened the lid of the water bottle and brought it to my lips. The sweet taste of water filled my mouth and slowly followed down my throat. I forced myself to stop. I wanted to savor it. I licked my lips and considered the apple. My hunger was sated. If I got hungry again later, it would really enjoy that apple. I trembled and looked back at the note. Princess Celestia said he'd send more food. I have to trust her. I have to stay strong and to do what I need to eat. Keep my mind working, thinking. I need to stay sane. I grabbed the apple in my hooves and took a large bite. My eyes rolled back, and the juice dribbled down my chin. If I closed my eyes, I could almost imagine I was in Sweet Apple Acres again. Surrounded by living friends, and not their bloated corpses and bones. It had been a week since my first meal arrived. At first, I was ashamed at how fast I ate it, worried that it was a one-time occurrence. Luckily, I found out that I was wrong when a bowl of hot soup arrived in a lidded container, along with a book. A note in the book told me how the research was coming, and to expect more small things. I looked up from the book I was reading as the air tingled. I frowned. It wasn't time for a meal. My eyes widened as Twilight appeared. No! 
Quickly, I turned to where the new twilight was being created to see nothing. M what? My ears picked up as I felt a hoof on my shoulder. I'm looking up into my own eyes as a brilliant smile was on her face. We figured it out, Twilight. We fixed the spell. Teleportation is safe now. The old form has been outlawed. She glanced over at the little spot I made for myself as far from the corpses as I could. The blankets and books she had sent me from the rest formed a nest. It was my safe spot. I'm so glad everything got to you. Celestia was worried. We figured out it might be too late, but I... I knew I could save you, Twilight. I had to, after you saved me. She shook her head and beamed at me. Come on. It's time to come home. Celestia has a medical bath on standby, and I'm sure you'd love a bath. A bath? I closed my eyes and laid my head against Twilight's chest, hearing her heartbeat. I hadn't even dreamed of a bath for so long. Yes. A nice, soaky bath. Once the doctors say it's all right, you'll be staying at the palace until you're ready to come home. Luna is ready to help with any nightmares you have and anything you may have been forced to do here. Her voice was soft, but I understood what she meant. Celestia wanted to keep an eye on me until she was sure of my sanity. I didn't mind, after all this. Will I be in any trouble? I couldn't help but ask. I hadn't had to kill any pony, not like my predecessors. But I had become a cannibal. Well, I lifted my head to look into my eyes before nuzzling my blood-stained cheek. No. Nothing you've done here was your choice. You survived. The they were already dead. But you made it. You survived. She pulled back and wrapped a wing around me, holding my forehoof firmly in hers, as if she was afraid I would slip from her grasp. I clung back just as hard, closing my eyes. You survived, Twilight. And now, let's go home. Her horn lit up and we vanished from the room that I thought would become my tomb. I was going home.